Now we're sitting here in our podcast studio. It's about it's always about forty degrees in <laughs> it here. It really is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's particularly hot this afternoon because uh, the AC unit was stolen, <laughs> but also because it's really hot outside. Yeah, and we have had warnings this week from the UK Met Office that we're heading for a heat wave with 30 plus temperatures coming. That's 30 degrees C. Um, It's not just hot in the UK. Continental Europe and parts of uh, the US are also uh, suffering. Yeah, and parts of the US like Alaska, uh, uh, unusually so. I think it was the first heat advisory ever issued in Alaska um, happened just last week. So this is a sign of how our summers are turning out Mm. as a result of the climate crisis. Here to tell us more is Maddie Cuff, Environment Reporter at New Scientist. Hi, Maddie. Hello. Um, yes, I've got some bad news for people here who don't like the heat. We're all melting in here. You might think that it feels hot out today, but this week the Met Office has released a new study that really demonstrates what extremes the current UK climate is capable of if we get the right weather conditions yeah, to what, allow it. What are we, how bad are we talking? Well, brace yourself. The headline <laughs> is that the UK urgently needs to start preparing for summers with temperatures in excess of 40 degrees Celsius. Yes. So the maximum temperature that the current UK climate is capable of generating is a whopping 46.6 degrees Celsius. That's how high it could get right now. That's super unlikely, but the Met Office thinks that temperatures of 42 degrees or even 43 degrees could occur and hang around for three or four consecutive days. Yeah, really bad and dangerous. Yeah, yeah, really dangerous. This is not fun levels of heat by any means. Um, And there is some more bad news. Heat waves are getting longer as well as hotter. So people always talk about this famous heat wave of 1976. It's like baked into the British imagination Mm -hmm. where UK temperatures remained above 30 degrees Celsius in parts of the country for more than two weeks. But the current UK climate is capable of similar heat waves that would last well over a month. So that's a whole month plus of temperatures like that. Um, you know that, that meme going that goes round from time to time about um, Homer Simpson sort of with his hand on Bart's shoulder saying, you know, and there's a terrible heat wave going on and he's saying, um, you know, enjoy the summer, it's the coolest, coolest <laughs> summer you're ever going to have in your life, kid. I, I just can't help thinking of that. It's so sad. Yeah, um, that hits. <laughs> I asked Gillian Kay about um, about this, not Homer Simpson, about about the story from the she's from the Met Office. I'd like to hear from both. <laughs> <laughs> Coming next week, um, I asked her about this Met Office study on the future temperatures, and here she is. We are becoming rather accustomed to seeing heatwave records being broken around the world year on year. In the UK, we reached a milestone in July 2022 when we recorded temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius for the first time, beating the previous record by over one and a half degrees. So we set out to investigate whether this was just a one-off or if we should be expecting these kinds of temperatures again, not decades into the future, but in the climate we have today. We ran thousands of simulations of a physics-based climate model on the Met Office supercomputer to give us many different plausible versions of the UK's summertime in today's climate. These allowed us to look well beyond our limited observational record and meant we could more robustly assess the current likelihood of 40 degrees. And we did find that temperatures several degrees higher than those we saw in July 2022 are possible in today's climate, as well as more prolonged heat waves. We also looked back at how heat waves have changed over time, and we found that the chance of 40 degrees has been rising rapidly over the last few decades. It's now more than 20 times as likely as it was in the 1960s. And with continuing climate change, it's likely to keep rising. But All of this information helps us gain a much better understanding of current risk. And armed with that, we can assess how these temperatures could affect us and help us prepare so that we're not caught out by more extreme heat waves than we've seen in the past and are more resilient to them. And we know that the prolonged heat exposure uh, that you can get in a, in a heat wave can be really damaging for the human body. It puts people at a greater risk of cardiac arrests and strokes. Whenever we get heat waves, you do see an increase in the death rate. And I think it, maybe it's worth saying for people who live in warmer countries, not the UK, we often seem to complain about the weather and why can't, you know, other countries it's, well, cope. It's a national trait, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But Britain, we're, we're normally quite a cold, wet country. Our houses aren't really 
built for how to cool down. We don't all have air conditioning. I've been really finding that since our weather has changed, once my home is warm, I really struggle to get it cool again after after a heat wave. And our bodies aren't yeah. built for it, right? Yeah. We haven't adjusted if people who, you know, grow up in hot countries are kind of used to those mm. kinds of temperatures and we're just not when they arrive for three weeks every summer. Mm. Um, and it's also worth stressing that these types of really long hot heat waves are terrible for ecosystems. So animals and plants um, who don't usually have this kind of hot weather can cope with a few days of high temperatures. But when you get long spells, that can, can prove really deadly. And it dramatically increases the risks of droughts developing, mm. which obviously piles even further pressure on the natural environment. And one thing that really stood out there is when we're talking about these temperatures, these heat waves that we're, we could be in for, this is based on our current climate, not where our climate is going even. Yeah, I think this is a really key point to make about this study, that this isn't future projections of what might happen um it you know as as warming progresses this is using a climate model using 2023 current conditions to simulate what could happen so they simulated more than two and a half thousand potential uk summers to assess what kinds of kinds of extremes would be possible so in other words this is what could happen next week or next month if we get unlucky not what might happen in five or ten years yeah that's that's a really important point to make um and obviously it just emphasizes again that if we as we are not cutting emissions fast enough it's only going to get worse yeah i think we have this tendency to kind of assume that heat extremes are something that we'll we'll have to deal with in the future but we're at risk of getting them right now and that risk is only increasing with every day week and month that we fail to cut emissions so you know this study was using a 2023 climate the risk is actually even higher yeah. already because we're in 2025 and th- the risk is r- changing rapidly like the rate of change is really striking so the chance of having a 40 degree celsius day in the uk is 20 times more likely to happen now than it was in the 1960s so what our parents would have thought of as a once in a lifetime event is now rapidly becoming a new normal for people living today yeah you hear you hear people say about this is the new normal and stuff, but I think we should also emphasise that, well, we shouldn't normalise this situation and we should keep on top of it, keep be worried about what's happening. Um, and, and when we get these sort of Met Office forecasts, you know, be reactive to them, use them and, and of course, keep pressure on government and industry to cut emissions yeah yeah and i think you're right i think that the kind of the term new normal is slightly misleading because if we're going to cope with these types of extremes we have to change how we live we have to change how we're adapting to these to these extreme seasons so we can't kind of go about as normal just coping with the new weather we have to make some changes (laughs) 